This is the fourth video for MA1001. This is a video about operations on functions. So we're interested in taking two functions and, and making a new function out of them. Uh, the simplest will be addition, a simplest operation. We take uh, a two functions, so f and g functions. Then we define a new function, which is called f plus g. And what function is it? Um, at each input value x gives output value given by f of x plus g of x. Um, so, for example, if we were to take um, as an example, we could take f of x to be sine x. We could take g of x to be x. And both of those then have the domain, have domain equal to the entire real number line. And so f plus g is has domain also equal to the real number line because if f's defined everywhere and g's defined everywhere, then f plus g is defined everywhere. And so we can uh, we can calculate what it is. What is f plus g? It's the function that at each point x gives us f of x plus g of x, which is sine x plus x. Okay, and if we wanted to be very careful, we could put in parentheses just to make sure that we know that this sine x is calculated here, that the plus sign is outside of the sine function. So we want to then think about what happens if we do an example where the domains don't quite fit together. Um, Suppose we have f of x is square root x, and g of x is cosine x. What's the domain of the square root function? We can only calculate square roots of numbers that aren't negative, so the domain is 0, infinity. It includes 0, it doesn't include infinity. The domain for the cosine function, domain is all of the entire real number line. But that means if we want to add the two together, f plus g, what should its domain be? It has to be the smaller of the two, or well, really the intersection of the two, because it has to be the points at x at which both of these expressions make sense. They're both defined, and this is defined here, and that's the constraint we have to deal with to make sure that the x can't be negative so that we will have a square root defined. And then f of uh, plus g of as a function of x is... Uh, square root x plus cosine x. Similarly, we can define um, a subtraction of functions in the obvious way. f minus g is the function which at each point x gives f of x minus g of x. And the same uh, discussion goes through with a minus signs instead of plus signs. Um, uh, we could also talk about multiplying functions multiplication. If we have um, an f of x and a g of x, then f times g is the function that at each point x gives us f of x times g of x. Again, it's defined whenever uh, they're both defined. So um, so if we had f of x is, is sine x and g of x is x squared, then f g at each point x gives us well, sine x times x squared, um, and it might be easier to write that as x squared times sine x, so that we don't accidentally put the x squared into the into the sine. It's outside the sine function. Um, so we could similarly divide. We have we've added, we've subtracted, we can uh, we've multiplied, we can divide. Division um, f divided by g is the function which at any point x, f divided by g of x, is f of x divided by g of x. Um, it is the obvious definition. And then we can say that it's defined, we have to be a bit more careful here, it's defined in the domain where uh, f and g are both defined, but also, uh, but also, and where g is not is not zero
So we can't calculate, we can't divide by zero. So if g is zero, then, then we're in trouble. It's not going to be allowed, it's not going to be defined. So, um, so for example, we could say, if we look at um, an example where f of x is, um, is cosine x, and g of x is something like x squared plus 3x minus 4, what's f over g? f over g is the function that at each point x gives me f of x divided by g of x, which is cos x divided by x squared plus 3x minus 4. Now these are these are domain that have domain the real numbers for f and the real numbers for g cosines defined everywhere and all these polynomials are defined everywhere. So we just figure out where is this defined? Well it's defined wherever the numerator and denominator are both defined, which is anywhere, but also where the denominator is not zero. So we need precisely that x squared plus three x minus four is not zero. Where does that fail to happen? It's easier to look at where it fails than where it succeeds because we like equal signs more than unequal signs. Um, so if we ask where are the points where this happens, and um, I'll leave you to um, factor that, x minus 1, x plus 4. And so the trouble occurs when x is 1 or here when x is minus 4. And so at those points we run into trouble. We can't divide by this because it's become 0. And so we have that the domain um, of f over g, its domain is precisely uh, the set of real numbers that are less than minus 4, together with the numbers between minus 4 and 1, together with the numbers from 1 to infinity. I'm oh, sorry, from 1 to, uh, to infinity. Um, okay, so, uh, so that's the domain of this function. Okay, so that's how we can deal with division. And um, the more sophisticated operation we can handle at this point is is, uh, is composition of functions. We can plug one function to another. So we've got uh, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. But we could also do uh, composition. What does that look like? So, um, so f after g. That's f after g, or it's also called f composed g, or composed with g. Um, that's how we read it. It's f, a little circle, and g. And its definition is that simply that you take a number and you plug it into f. Sorry, into g. You plug it into g. And then you, um, th then you um, take the output of that, which is, of course, g of x, and you plug it into f, and then you take the output of that, and that's going to be f of g of x. And if we do them in the opposite order, that's so that's uh, f composed g of x. Um, if we do them in the opposite order, because we get a different function in general, x going first, uh, first to f gives me f of x, and then going through g gives me g of f of x. And those are usually different functions. Usually those are different. Um, so um, so the domain of f of, let's say, f of g of x, for example, is the set of x so that uh, x is in the domain of g. So you can plug it in. It makes sense to plug it into g. And then that has to make sense to plug into f. And g of x is in the domain of f. Okay, so we have to be able to make sense out of it. All right, so if we were to take um, a simple example, uh, we could look at f is um, so f of, let's use t instead of x just to make sure we're comfortable using other letters. It doesn't have to be letter x. t plus t is t plus 2. And g of, let's say, r, and use a different variable for, for the variable for g. It doesn't matter whether we use a different variable or the same variable. That's the square root. Then we can look at yeah, f circle, let's say f circle g of x is uh, 
f of g of x is f of g of x is square root x, g is a square root function, and then f of anything is that thing plus 2, square root x. You can put parentheses just to make sure we can see that that's going on outside the square root. Square root x plus 2. g circle f of x is g of f of x is g of x plus 2, f adds 2, and then g square roots. And I can see that the square root is surrounding the x or surrounding the x plus 2. So that gives us um, the other uh, the other direction. And we could work out our domains if we wanted to. Uh, this guy is defined whenever things are positive. So, um, okay, so uh, so that's uh, how we can see that, that we have to be careful about what order we use the composition in. Again, just to emphasize that f compose g is not usually equal to f times g. It's not multiplication. This is composition. Plug the g into the f. This is calculate f, calculate g, multiply the results together. Um, so they're different things. Um, okay, so in general they're different things. Um, now sometimes we can break complicated functions up into simpler pieces and that's an important thing to do. Um, to write a function as a composition. So if we started off with, as an example, Suppose f of x was uh, the square root of x squared divided by x plus 3. Um, then we could think of that as being a function of this function. So we could let uh, k of x be square root x. And then f of x can be written more simply as it's a square root of something. So it's a k of something. k is square root. So it's k of x squared over x plus 3. And so if we let, um, let um, let's say, l of x be x squared over x plus 3, the inside function, then we have f of x is k of l of x, or in other words, is k circ l of x. So we can write a more complicated function as a composition of simpler functions. It's a useful skill to be able to do. Okay, then we could try and work out the, the domain of the whole of f, the whole, the whole function, the whole of f here. Um, we can work out its domain by saying, well, it has to be the numbers for which this expression makes sense and then for which this square root makes sense. So we'd have to make sure that this doesn't go to zero. And once we do that, so x can't be equal to minus 3, then we'd also have to worry about the possibility that this thing might be negative, and that could get in the way of making sense of the square root.